coming up on Inside California Education. Discover why mariachi music programs are a big draw in the San Diego area, engaging kids in school and instilling a sense of cultural pride. She knows what it means. A R O C A I N. That is correct. Congratulations. Meet a national spelling champ, now inspiring kids in her Clovis school district to learn the art of spelling. All right, good morning, you guys. Good morning. See what's involved in a day in the life of an activities director. Give it a little bit more adventure. And a program gives students as young as fourth grade a glimpse of college life right on campus. It's all next on Inside California Education. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $32 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $191 for each full-time student based on $1.5 billion contributed in fiscal year 2016-17. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Thanks for joining us on Inside California Education. I'm Jim Finnerty. Music is an important part of the educational experience for many young people. It's especially true for a generation of students in the San Diego region who grew up listening to their parents' mariachi music. Well, now those same students are getting the opportunity to play mariachi on their school stage. High school senior Elianilla was always musical. Rock music was his first love when he began playing guitar in the sixth grade. But it was a mariachi music class at San Isidro High in Chula Vista's Sweetwater Union School District that gave him a chance to try something different. You can be anything. You can interpret the song any way you want. You can, you can play with the music. And it, that's just like the really fun part about mariachi because there's so many styles, there's so many uh, genres, there's so many backgrounds that you can do whatever you want with it. They go. Good job. San Isidro music teacher Wendy Shorinas begins her early morning advanced mariachi class with vocal exercises even before her students pick up their instruments. All of these youngsters are here because of their interest in mariachi music. Mariachi music is folk music from Mexico. Through the music we teach them pride about their culture and they also at the same time are learning how to play music to be able to read notes, to understand music notation, to understand uh, the background and the history of music, and pertaining to mariachi music because that's the, the nature of the class. Now play one and two and ready, go. One and two. Many of the students here and in other mariachi classes begin with no previous musical training. The class will practice musical scales together then break into separate instrument groups to focus on particular sections and sounds. The mariachi music tradition began in rural areas of western Mexico in the early part of the 19th century. Often featured at local festivals, the songs speak about human emotions, love, betrayal, even death. Some of these students have family members who were musicians themselves or encouraged the young people to play. For Evelyn, it was her aunt. She would always blast mariachi music at the house no matter what party we would go to or just to clean the house in general and she would be like oh mija you should try this you know and I'm like 
I don't know, Tia, like, I don't know if I could learn this. I always like this music. My family, they play it. Um, my dad used to play it. My mom used to play it. So when I was little, I started listening to, listening to it. So yeah, I like it a lot. It's a music that is culturally important to a lot of our students. The uh, mariachi tradition is very big in Mexico. And for a lot of our Hispanic students, they want music that they can relate to, that they can enjoy, that their parents uh, can come out and see. But it's also important because this is a medium that reaches those students, that gets them involved in music. As the students' musical skills evolve, they take part in school and community performances. Taking the stage in traditional costumes, they deliver a colorful presentation of high energy, emotional music. You have the violins and the trumpets that are the melodies. They give the melodies and the harmonies of the you know, specific notes. And of course, uh, mariachi music, you have to have vocalists. You have to have singers in the group. The mariachi music program in the Sweetwater Union High School District began with a single after-school class at Southwest High in 1998. Its popularity exploded. We hired new teachers and so we developed programs in each of the schools from that point on to this point where we have now have seven schools that have mariachi programs, over 992 kids. Tempo. Boom, 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 boom. Sweetwater High School teacher Fred Sanchez takes his performing group through its paces with class sessions and after school practice. He points out that playing provides benefits beyond the music. There are kids that this is a class that keeps them in school, going to drama, going to art, going to music, mariachi, band, orchestra. They might not want to come because they have a test, but they don't want to miss the class that they really like. So it really helps them to stay in school. The Sweetwater School District provides instruments for students in the program, and Fred says part of the attraction to the music comes from its distinctive sound. Violins, trumpets, and guitars make up a large part of that sound, but two less familiar instruments are essential. The guitarón, a wide back Mexican bass, and the smaller stringed vihuela that looks like a guitar. And unlike the guitar, it is non-chromatic, which means that it does not go from the lowest pitch to the highest pitch, it actually jumps around, very much like the ukulele, and we play it by strumming. We have a finger pick and we play it by strumming. The mariachi groups here have been recognized for their performances in local and regional competitions. Their teachers say those experiences allow them to take away the applause of the audience and something equally important. We find that students with an arts background are more successful because of the lessons they've learned. So they may not realize it yet, but they will know in their future that this has helped prepare them for a great life. Did you know? Mariachi bands do not have lead singers. Members are assigned songs that best match their personalities. With more than 500 schools nationwide offering mariachi programs, many young singers have new opportunities to express their personalities through song. So many of us have come to rely on autocorrect on our phones or our computers that some fear that spelling may be a dying art. But that's not what we found in the town of Clovis. These students are among thousands dedicated to honing their spelling skills and competing in spelling bees across California and the U.S. It turns out it may actually help kids do better in all kinds of other subjects. The E sound in Italian is spelled with an I. Six o'clock on a Friday evening, school is finished for the week, 
Most kids are headed into a leisurely weekend with friends and family. And then staccato, which means to switch from note to note very quickly. As I said earlier. But at Fugman Elementary in Clovis, just north of Fresno, the, the weekend can wait. The dozen C members of the school's spelling team are still here, soaking up tips from their coach on how to prepare for, and maybe even win, a spelling bee. D I P S. She may seem too young to be a coach. She is just 13. But what she lacks in correct. coaching experience, the word is Ananya Vene more than makes up with as a spelling bee veteran. P T E R O D A C T Y L. That is correct. She knows what it means. A R O C A I N. That is correct. Congratulations, Ananya. Ananya is a three-time California spelling champion, which led to a national victory in a competition now so popular is broadcast on ESPN. P-I-C-C-A-L-O. It's P-I-C-C-O-L-O, -O, but you can get a candy. We caught up with Ananya at an event called the Great Valley Book Fest in Manteca where she hosted a booth offering t-shirts to people who spelled words correctly and candy to people who didn't. A-Q-U-I-L-I-N-E, but you can get a candy. Here, that's okay, we'll take candy. I always liked to read when I was younger, and then I competed in my first spelling bee in, in first grade, and I, and I really liked it. I wasn't really that nervous because I knew the words I got and I could spell them. And then you spend incredible amounts of time, as well as others like her, in, in reading widely, in becoming broadly literate, in understanding yes. other languages than English. Uh, it's, a, it's a very intense preparation for an event like this. Ananya's spelling bee success hasn't just made her a local celebrity. It's also brought other kids to the team. More than 30 tried out for this squad for just 12 spots. I've noticed that uh, more enthusiasm since Ananya has had her success with kids talking about, oh, I'm going to be the next Ananya and I want to get involved, I'm going to study and I'm going to do well, and it's very intellectually stimulating for the kids. But is knowing how to spell thousands of words when you're in elementary school a useful skill? Is it more than just a simple talent for memorization? Ananya and her spelling team advisor say it actually goes way beyond that. When you study spelling, you learn a lot of science terms. So when, you, when you're asked what a science term means, you can say the meaning, you can say the roots, and then you can, like, you can understand what the science, the science term really is because it increases your vocabulary and your confidence and your public speaking skills. Spelling um, definitely improves uh, reading fluency, uh, improves uh, vocabulary and uh, comprehension. Maram is spelled M-A-R-R-A-M. Well, so for the last 12 years, I've had the privilege of announcing the National Spelling Bee, the Scripps National Spelling Bee on television. Uh, it's as intense as any event that I've ever announced anywhere. Paul Leffler is the play-by-play -play announcer for Fresno State's basketball and football teams. He, too, was a competitive speller, winning on the local level as an eighth grader and then finishing 13th on the national stage. He was the announcer on ESPN that night when Ananya finished first. People think this is just rote memorization and you're just a robot who's spitting stuff out. Really, I think it's so interdisciplinary. It builds vocabulary. It builds study habits. You have to be able to think critically. And to win that Scripps National Spelling Bee, you have to do all those things and perform under pressure. So it's, it's a pretty impressive skill set you develop if you're at this for a while. It's been a few years since Paul's national competition, but he remembers instantly the word that did him in. Everybody remembers every word they ever missed in a spelling bee. I mean, I, I have yet to meet a speller that has forgotten the word that took him out. So I, I got, this was the sixth round, I think. I got stachios. It is a sugar derived from the Chinese artichoke. S-T-A-C-H-Y-O-S-E. Fresno educators right. don't apologize for putting an emphasis on correct spelling when those words are so easily found on a phone or laptop. Let's That's see, because um, incorrect yes, spelling table, can say a lot about a person. We live in a time of instant good, communication, good, 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 and right, again, that please, first impression good, we make good, good, with an email, good, with a text, good, with a tweet, uh, again, uh, is all again. important. There's a lot of research that supports that when a, 
a piece of communication is misspelled, uh, the, the receiver automatically changes their view of the person sending that message. I've spoken to some administrators in Clovis Unified when they have 50 or 100 applicants for one job. They see a spelling error, goes in the trash. These Clovis kids probably aren't thinking that far ahead about correct versus incorrect spelling. They do know that being a whiz with words can bring just as much enjoyment as being on other school teams. The coach ought to know. He's been there. The stakes are high for spellers who make it to the Scripps National Spelling Bee. All contestants receive small prizes from donors such as Kindle, Merriam-Webster, and Encyclopedia Britannica. The winner takes away a $40,000 cash prize, a $2,500 savings bond, plus trips to New York City and Hollywood. Still ahead on Inside California Education, fourth through ninth grade students get a chance to sample college classes at Sacramento State. But first, a day in the life of an activities director. Modesto is Central Valley. Our valley thrives in what the farm industry has done for our families. We're very community based here in, in Modesto and we appreciate what high schools do for our communities. I'm Melissa Mayer. This is my first year as activities director of Byer High School in Modesto, California. Fire High School is actually a very interesting high school simply because we take pride in everything that we do. All right, good morning, you guys. Good morning. Good morning. It's finally here, Ugly Sweater Day. I really appreciate everybody who showed up in their ugly, ugly sweaters. As an activities director, I, I'm planning and managing these activities, but they're really carried out by the students in my classroom. I have a vision and I plan the vision, but it really comes up to the students to then take that vision and make it a reality. And that's fun. So for all of you who helped, thank you. They look amazing. It's different than I've ever experienced before because I'm working with some really excellent kids that want to make our school a better campus. This is a big deal. This is a big event. We do it every year. So um, just make sure to bring it your all. Today we hosted our ASB meeting, and that's where we discuss school events. We go over old business, we go over new business, and we also um, look at all the financials of the school. School culture, it's not just about me and the 40 students in my class. It's about every individual and how they play a unique role in the puzzle of Byer High School. Winterfest is a combination of my leadership students and other clubs here at Byer High School um, putting together holiday crafts and games and fun for not only the families of Byer High School um, and the teachers, but we've also opened up to the community. my ultimate goal is, is making this school not just a school but a family and a place where kids feel safe and they feel loved and they feel encouraged and they feel supported. I love kids, I love students. It keeps me naturally young and I couldn't see myself doing anything else and being in any other capacity. Exposing students to college at a young age has many benefits. For elementary and middle school students enrolled in the Academic Talent Search Program at Sacramento State, it's a chance to experience real college coursework and get a glimpse into their possible futures. Okay, everyone repeat after me. Amo, amo, samo. This is a college level Latin class being taught on a college campus. But the students here are not college students. They're highly motivated fourth through ninth graders, eager for a challenge. Donut. No, donut. It's a very complex and interesting language that we're learning. Sometimes it's a little hard because you're at college material even though I'm in eighth grade. It's also, I feel proud because I'm able to handle this information even though it's really five years ahead of me. Jack is one of about 1,600 students spending the summer with academic talent search. 
Located on the Sacramento State campus, the program gives youngsters a glimpse of the college life. It's set up just like college where they get to pick and choose classes based on their interest or if they're just curious about a class or if they want to delve deeper into a subject matter. Some of the more unique classes that we have are a saving lives class. So those kids can learn on these mannequins that simulate maybe a heart attack or a broken limb. He's going to put his thumb right through. If they're really into math, they can take a five-week uh, math class and earn a year's worth of credit. Or they can learn a foreign language like Japanese for five weeks, that's a whole year's worth. A lot of the classes we teach aren't classes that students can really get elsewhere. And so the students that I get are students that really want to learn. The junior high students that we have, the sixth to ninth graders, exceed your typical high school student and probably even a lot of the college students I would imagine um, in their ability to take in the information, to learn the information at a very rapid pace. <laughs> Braden attends a middle school without a drama department. So for him, an acting class offered by Academic Talent Search lets him explore his passion. Um, um Miss Grant, it, it, excuse me, um, I, I just have to interrupt. Um, I've always been really interested in um, acting and theater and drama. I thought this would just advance my skills. It's so much different in a college atmosphere because the classes are a lot bigger, obviously a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> I see other college students, actual college students, and it makes me feel like I'm one of them. I fit in with them. I feel a lot cooler. <laughs> the students are treated pretty much like college students, so they get a, a sense of freedom and independence and that uh, it's kind of hard to duplicate in any regular school setting. Sacramento State Professor Terry Thomas founded the Academic Talent Search Program in 1982 with a group of kids who wanted to learn advanced math. In the three decades since then, more than 44,000 students have given the college experience a try. They have fun with it. I mean, they, they like uh, going up the escalator, getting a, a, a mocha at the uh, snack shop, and, uh, and being treated pretty much like a kid. <laughs> <laughs> they might forget the class, but they remember the experience of being on a college campus. Sacramento State's College of Education donates the classroom space for the program, which is otherwise self-supported by tuition. The college's dean, Alexander Sidorkin, says the university benefits on several levels. First, it's uh, exposure, early exposure of many kids to the campus space and environment, and they get a taste of how college looks like. So uh, hopefully they'll keep us in mind when they grow up and become applying to colleges. And we also love to have kids around in our buildings. Let's move some of that into the middle and maybe okay. add a little barbecue, or is that all barbecue? There's some barbecue in okay. there at the bottom. Darken it up a little bit in the middle. Okay. Students in this class are busy creating fake wounds that they will then learn how to bandage. This hands-on experience already has 12-year-old Brooke thinking about a potential career. There we go, yep. At this point, I'm trying to just try a lot of new things so that I can understand where I want to specialize and just experiencing everything that I can. If I decide to go into healthcare, um, this class, The Science of Saving Lives, will definitely be really helpful. We've had a lot of feedback from parents and, and kids themselves after they've been with us that it's made a difference to them individually, that uh, in terms of their career, many times they choose their college majors based on the experiences they had at Sac State. I mean, just give it a little bit more dimension. Danielle Villaluna is one alumna whose life was shaped by the experience. The college junior returned to Academic Talent Search to work as a teaching assistant for the same art class she took as a seventh grader. And I used to sit in these same chairs, maybe the same classroom too. And I used to sit here and create art and that's how I started getting into art. So it's really kind of exciting to see that same excitement coming back into those kids' eyes because I used to feel that when I was sitting in their place. What I would tell everybody else about this program is it's a great experience, it's a lot of fun, um, you get to meet a lot of new people, you're in a totally different atmosphere, it's, it's just completely life changing. That's it for this edition of Inside California Education. 
Now, if you'd like more information about the program, just log on to our website, InsideCalEd.org. We have video from all of our shows, and you can connect with us on social media as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. Now play one and two and ready, go. One and two. Um, um, Miss Grant, excuse me. Um, I, I just have to interrupt. Um, they go. go. and then staccato, which means to switch from note to note very quickly. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $32 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $191 for each full-time student based on $1.5 billion contributed in fiscal year 2016-17. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. So, Greg, it's a lot to take in. And I know that's hard to hear, but the doctors caught it early. Hi, Blake. My dad has cancer. And I know how hard that is to hear. But you're in the right place. And Dr. Pascal and her team, they know what to do. They know what to do. The doctors know what to do. So here's the plan. First off, we're going to give you all this information. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Additional funding for Inside California Education is made possible by these organizations supporting public education.